Hallo Leute und willkommen bei VW Ledergerät und Ledermanager Kanal. Noch einmal. BMW. Hochspannung. Ledestecker. Ledergerät. Okay, folks, no matter how I go about this, it's going to be kind of crazy. Uh, we've got so much stuff set up here. So, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to show you the thing working. Then we'll kind of backtrack as to how we actually got there. Okay, so we have our Arduino sketch running on this laptop. Uh, power supply providing 12 volts. And here we have our e-tron charger. This little green light at the minute simply represents the illumination LED that would be a much, much brighter white LED uh, that would be in the charging port. For high voltage DC, charging port, and data connector there. Come around this way. We have our Chidemo socket bringing in our high voltage from the E39. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the old lady stecker in. Our granny cable will click on under the bench. We start getting this kind of a weird colored LED flashing here. I don't know how well that's going to come out. It kind of looks green, but it's not. It's supposed to be white. So I'm going to come over here on the computer. I'm going to hit activate. Charger activated. Just ignore the boards. They tend to scare me when um, when I'm doing this stuff. So you see, we got our AC on, HVDC is on. Now there's a delay in the code. Uh, not sure what that's about yet. Oh, there it is. There's our charger is now starting up. You see, we have a green LED flashing there now. And if I come around to our amp meter. And we have our, uh, I don't know if it's going to come out too well. Hey, it's not going to come out at all. Brilliant. There it is. The current is kind of ramping up and down a little bit there because we're hitting our high voltage target. Uh, so it's just ramping the current up and down. So if I were to go to the computer, I can just crank that up a little bit. I'm sure the land yacht won't complain. Set our current for 3 amps, but our charger is basically charging away and I can hear the converter whistle inside it at the minute. I'll try and get you in there so you can see that. So it is actually putting power in from our AC and uh, charging away merrily. You can see it draws about one amp from 12 volts. At the minute, the feedback does not give me um, current, so I'll have to get that, probably because it's expecting that from the BMS. But as you can see there, the DC voltage is increasing. So I'm going to shut the charger down at that. And there we go, deactivated. We're back to our little LED setup there. So the question is, how did we get here? Well, the answer is kind of in the statement there. It was very much not just me. Um, it was very much some other folks that took on the quite serious task of getting that e-tron charger uh, to the point that you just saw there. Um, let's just say that I wouldn't have had a hope, not one hope, uh, for several reasons. So basically how we got here uh, was that a very smart guy by the name of Mitch Elliott 
uh, and I will link his YouTube channel in the description. Uh, got himself one of those chargers and using a combination of, um, I guess, factory level programming coding stuff, which we will show you some of what I've copied from him here. And some of the simple code that I'd written to run the 3.3 kilowatt PHEV uh, char charger. And he kind of worked out from first principles, not only the CAN messages, but the format uh, that they would need in order to make the e-tron charger work. But it's not even that simple. Because you may recall that that e-tron charger had this kind of a crazy um, LIN control charging door on it and all kinds of sensors and lights and weird stuff going on there. Uh, that would have been a major problem for us. Uh, my initial plan was to kind of capture the LIN communication and, you know, have a spoofer in there. Uh, turns out uh, we don't need to do any of that. Uh, because following uh, Mitch's system, you can basically code the charger to not have any of those uh, requirements. So that's what I've done here. Uh, it was quite a, quite a, mm, I guess a bit of a process learning curve hill to, to, to climb. And I still, you know, I don't really know much about it. I'm literally just monkey see, monkey do here. Um, but we can now code off all of the kind of annoying G Whiz features uh, from, I would say, not only the e-tron charger, but, pro but probably all of the Volkswagen uh, chargers and just make them, you know, pretty simple. Well, pretty simple. Uh, so that you just, you know, plug in and you get DC out. You can tell it over, can what you want it to do. Even in the case of the little demo I did here, uh, you may have observed that the charging port lock thing um, doesn't work because I have that turned off in the charger coding. Because whatever re reason, um, that is a Volkswagen charging port. It is from a say at me. Uh, but whatever it is, that e-tron charger does not does not like the lock feedback or I've wired up something wrong or I'm doing something stupid. Uh, so just to get on with the actual testing, I've coded off the charge port lock. Now, as some of you know, I don't really like charge port locks, particularly on AC. Now, I know you're going to say, Damien, you're doing it wrong. If you don't have a charge port lock, someone is going to accidentally unplug that Ladish decker when it's at full power, the resulting plasma ball will melt a hole straight down into the Earth's crust, releasing a magna plume of super volcano levels that will block out the sun for several decades, plunge the entire planet into nuclear winter, and result in the extinction of all life on Earth. Okay. Let's leave that one for now. Get on with the charger hacking. Okay, so let's have a look at our test bench setup here in a bit more detail. And we will show you uh, some of the coding system and so forth here. Keep in mind that this is a pretty crazy kind of development setup here. So, obviously, ultimate aim with this will be to port the software over to run in the Zombieverter VCU. Uh, so you won't need any of this junk. You just plug the, ch the charger in and it'll work. Uh, just with a menu selection uh, on the VCU interface. Um... In terms of the coding stuff, like I said, not really up on this, don't really know what I'm doing apart from a few little bits and pieces uh, that I've picked up over the last week or so. 
will try and pass uh, that knowledge on to you. Also recommend for those more interested in the in-depth side of this, I'll put a link in the description over to uh, a thread on the Open Inverter Forum uh, with a lot more details in there. So let's get a look at the hardware and then we will have a look at our Otis. Not, not Otis, like sitting on the dock of the bay stuff. That's completely different. Fortunately, that song does not get stuck in my head too much. The one that really gets stuck in my head and it actually stopped me from making a video here one day, you'll be very pleased to know, um, is Pinball w Wizard. So no comments with the, the tune from Pinball Wizard, okay? Because then it goes, and then I can't, you know, so bad. Okay, so let's start here with our charger. Obviously the wiring is a mess job, okay? So, because there's been a lot of trial, error, more trial, more error, and so forth going on here. So obviously we get this dialed down uh, to a much more um, sane uh, wiring harness. But at its most basic, the wiring harness here simply needs 12 volts, ground, can high, can low for communication. There's four temperature sensors uh, that I have spoofed with these 1K resistors. So again, I'm not going to get into the temperature sensors and the, the melting a hole in the, the Earth's crust and all that. 1K resi resistor. Uh, keeps the charger happy there. We have an illumination LED. Obviously, that's just the representation. Um, you could rig up a nice uh, high, high brightness uh, white LED in your charging port. And you can even control the brightness of this flipping thing. Um, RGB LED is just a standard one that I've put in here just again for... Uh, testing purposes um, you can use one of those RGB push buttons in fact I think Mitch has one of those in his uh, video that would be much more useful than this but this is just what I happen to have so it's two LEDs CAN bus power couple of resistors to spoof the temperature sensors and at its very very simplest um, over at the charging port, you, uh, ooh, walking on the cables, you literally just need um, control, control pilot and um, uh, proximity. So CP and PP. Now, obviously, then you need your AC and so forth. And it just so happens. As I said, that charging port there is from, uh, say, at me. Now, that's a two-phase port. There's, like, it's not a three-phase one, which is what this charger needs. But the plug goes in here, and it's good enough for, um, you know, obviously, I'm only using single phase here for testing. Uh, DC power comes out here. Again, same kind of plug as was on the say, at me. So I'm able to, to just use that. And that's pretty much you, folks. Um, so once we've coded off all of those other kind of gee whiz, junky things, like as I said, you may recall, I had this thing uh, set up there on the bench and all of this, Lin bus and lights and buttons and doohickeys and all of that. We don't need any more of that, thankfully. So, okay, so we grab our CAN bus, <laughs> which is this wire here, the twisted pair, and it comes all the way over here. Oh yeah, we got our Volkswagen um, contactor box working in the zombie Varter now. Sorry, distracted. And over this way we come, CAN bus here, and we get to this little nightmare here. 
uh, which I'll try and explain to you. So this thing, mongoose, oh, can't see the M right now. There we go, M, mongoose. This is a mongoose pro cable and it has connections here to the CAN bus. Uh, where is it? Yeah, CAN bus, ground and 12 volts uh, to two pins here. And the mongoose is what lets us uh, program, code, call it what you will, our Volkswagen charger and probably other Volkswagen stuff, but I'll get to that in a second. It's an Arduino Dewey board here, which is running basically Mitch's uh, so software uh, for controlling the charger, which is running on this uh, laptop here with Ubuntu on it. We've got um, another um, CAN Dewey board here hooked into the CAN bus, and that's running on this laptop here, which just has a Savvy CAN on there so I can monitor CAN. Now, this one is where all the fun happens. Now, before, <laughs> before um, I get into this, because uh, as I know the internet being the, the internet, um, will be more interested in the smashed screen than in any of the things that I'm going to describe here. And will endlessly um, theorize that I rage quit at Fortnite or something like that. Not so. This laptop uh, I picked up for free in my local tip. Uh, it was perfectly functioning, apart from the broken screen. So I formatted it, loaded Ubuntu, and it's some kind of HP fancy thing. I put a Brat Industries sticker over the whatever silly thing it had um, on there. But it's a decent enough laptop, and it's, ba it's basically free. Now, the mongoose that we previously mentioned, this guy here, mongoose. Uh, plugs into the USB on the, uh, the Rage Quits special. And because of the slightly damaged screen, uh, I've got this old monitor here set up uh, so we can kind of have a twin monitor uh, system here with the Rage Quitter. So this is where all of the fancy stuff happens. As I said, it's uh, just mostly following uh, Mitch's advice and instructions here but by the same token this was a bit of a tour de force uh, to get set up. Now I'm not going to get too deep into that at all today. Um, I can do in a specific video if people are interested uh, but the first thing is that this is what's called a virtual machine. So on the right hand side screen there, that is running um, a Windows 10 image from a hard drive uh, that was specifically set up to run the Volkswagen Otis uh, system or off-board diagnostic information system. See, I wonder how you say that in German. Hmm, must find out. Anyway. VirtualBox is running on Ubuntu here and is providing the framework uh, to run this Windows 10 image. So, I'm going to set the camera up and we'll fire up Otis and I will basically show you the broad strokes of the coding and the diagnostic uh, procedure that we can do here on our Volkswagen Charger. Alright, so... First things first, go ahead and start up the program. So Bill, obviously being Bill, um, has to have his say first. And then there's going to be a lot of uh, junk come up here about updaters and all this, so we can just cancel out of all of this. Just keep cancelling that junk, and the uh, program itself uh, will start up. Um, it would start up a bit quicker if I allocated more resources to the virtual box, but um, yeah, not so much. So, um, when you first set this up, uh, obviously you'll have to go into the configuration and go into diagnostic interface. 
and that's another thing getting all the drivers and all that stuff working but anyway it's this j2534 pass through uh, which is what you need for this kind of work and our one in this case is the mongoose so it's actually very lucky to have the mongoose i bought it on advice for the musclo for programming the volvo anyway we're going to hit diagnostic entrance now it's going to try and determine the VIN, which it's not going to be able to do because we don't obviously have a car hooked up, so it's going to churn away on that for a little bit. All right, then it's going to bring up this select the project. Now over on the Open Inverter Forum, uh, Mitch has put this AU58X IDEX project. So you're going to have to import that. I won't again get into that here in this video. It's going to hit that. So it's going to churn away again a little bit more on here. Now while it, ch it churns, you'll see this vehicle status should change to terminal 30 here, which it has. So now it's going to churn and churn and churn it's going to create a list of the control modules that are in that project that we just opened so we've got all these modules the one that we want is at address c6 so we're just going to drag down here and we get to c6 and we'll say that's high voltage battery charger so just for a test, I'm going to hit the identification. You should see that go to a green plus, which it does. And it'll now pull up the information on our e-tron uh, battery charger. Hopefully, unless it fritzes out. Sometimes it does fritz out. You just got to start again. So it did. There we go. So this is our... Um, part number it's um, OBC Costal. Costal make that charger not far from here uh, to the best of my knowledge and uh, we got our coding here and it's the three phase OBC I wonder what that does oh wow so there's a lot more info there I hadn't even looked at that before um, read subsystems what does that do don't know, I've never done this before, so probably really shouldn't be doing it on camera. Um, but I don't know. See what it does anyway. There's an awful lot of information. No, I didn't do anything. Okay. In here. So, that proves that we have communication uh, with our charger. So, the next interesting thing we can do is we can have a look at the DTC memory. Uh, so, that's diagnostic trouble codes. That's basically your... Um, your uh, errors, you know, usual DTC kind of thing. And you'll, it'll, it'll pull up a lot of them uh, here usually, uh, but they're not present. So if we come down here, uh, we can clear those DTCs. And we can just hit update and it'll read them out again. And it's, it's clear, there's no uh, DTCs here at all. So you can leave these tabs open here on the bottom as well, which is quite handy. You can just click back here. Um, another interesting thing is the measured values. So we can actually read uh, real-time um, info. So let's just, for the sake of something interesting, see if there's any voltages we can read. Um, uh, there's all kinds, there's literally hundreds of things on this. There's gate driver voltage, supply voltage, probably just a 12 volt HV, output voltage, AC line voltage, you won't get anything on that at the minute. Um, but there's all kinds of flags and all kinds of info here that is just super useful um, for... Um, for doing di di diagnostics when we kind of don't know why the charger is going to start up. Um, so yeah, not, not a great selection that I did there, but you get the idea. You know, you can filter here. You, know, you can do things like status, 
Um, no, oh, maybe uh, well, if I could if I, if I could spell, you can. Um, charging status, say you can do there. LED statuses, you know, there's just literally there's just tons of stuff here. So it'll say the LED is currently turned off here, for example. Anyway, so that's live data. Uh, we can click out of that. Um, the real one that we're kind of interested the most in here is coding. So if I hit coding, it's going to bring up this table. And this is where the real fun happens. It turns out that my charger, the one here, had actually be, been configured uh, for a vehicle in the Chinese market. Uh, so for example, under country coding here, with these options, it had been set up for the People's Republic of China, and it had been configured for, um, for the Chinese type of charging socket and so forth. Now, awful lot of options here. Um, at first, I attempted to follow Mitch's coding here, and he was using charging socket B. Uh, but whenever I coded charging socket B on, uh, I would get a DTC that would basically say that I had incorrect configuration uh, for my control unit, incorrect configuration or something like that. I might try and put a picture of that up if I can find it. Um, so for example here, uh, there's a lot of things like we say we have AC charging on socket A, um, we have PLC charging which is our CCS because this charger has the CCS modem and all of that kind of thing in it so we can turn that on. Uh, country coding Europe, the charging socket resistor on the PP line, all this kind of stuff. Uh, if people want, I can try to go through some of this. Not that I know what a lot of this stuff means, but I just could just kind of, you know, just kind of um, working things out by first principles. So, interesting things here that we could code off. For example, charge flap locking A and B means that we don't need any of these lock feedbacks or lock motors. Not on the charging port. So not the one that holds the cable in, but the one that holds the silly door flap closed and motors it and all this kind of thing. Um, then we have the same thing here, like we've charge flap lock detection. So we can turn that off so we don't, we don't need all that kind of thing. Now you'll see here plug interlock. This one is where I had turned off the charge plug lock. Um, and the reason I had it turned off here was actually not that I don't have one, uh, was simply because it didn't, the feedback mechanism within that port, that say at me port, just did not seem to uh, register with our charger. Uh, so I just coded that off here so I could proceed. Um, so there's things like, you know, power line communication modem. So we've that turned on. Um, you can do a local HV interlock is quite a good one, like so that you can actually have a local HV interlock, as it means, um, just on the high voltage connections. Uh, I would just code it off there just for simply um, setting things up. Um, then you have your... Yeah, I'm not sure what these LEDs here are supposed to do. I have them turned off, but I'm still getting LED obviously working, as you would have seen there. Um, not 100% sure um, what the, this situation, verbal status, lay de dose, I'm not sure what that means here. Um, I have the A one turned on. Interestingly, again, on my charger, because it had been set up for the Chinese market, um, the Chinese charging socket was switched on. Obviously, I have that turned off. But when I turn on the 
the, the combo socket, which you would think would make sense, that gives me that um, error. So I might just turn that on there just to show you guys what happens. Um, and that's about it, what I've got here. Uh, again, not 100% sure what some of these do or mean here. Uh, so just to show you the coding process. So let's say that we wanted to turn on this, um, the DC combo socket, I assume is what this means here. So you just click on entry from not installed to installed and go up here to the right and click apply. Now you would think that this will just work. Oh yeah, we've just got to hit yes. You would think that that'll just work, but hell no, it won't. Um, it basically is going to sit here and it wants a five digit login code because apparently now we have to log in to uh, a battery charger in order to make coding changes. And you would have, again, you know, you know other than searching the web, uh, I'd have had no chance whatsoever to find 20103. Um, if it were not for a certain person assisting me. So we put the login code in, we hit perform. Now it'll, yeah, coding process was successful and it'll reread the codes again. And if we come down here now, we'll see it'll say DC combo dose verbout. So we can now go over to our DTCs again. I bet you it'll make a fool of me and hit read. Ah, here it is. Control module vehicle options error. And basically it will do nothing as long as that DTC is set here. Um, it won't, um, you know, let me charge. It won't turn on any uh, LEDs. It'll just basically sit there. Now at first I thought that perhaps the problem here was because um, Mitch has obviously been working on an American um, coding and so and so on on his charger. Uh, that it was because I was U European. I tried changing that coding, made no difference. I tried running this without the Arduino Dewey sending can, gave me the same thing. Um, so we're going to just go back now and we'll just turn off that uh, DC combo. We just go again, go again, and oh no, what is the secret login code? Couldn't possibly let that be known to the world. So there we go. So again, it'll just read the codes back, and if we come down here, it'll say uh, DC combo is now not installed. Back to our DTCs, and I'll just hit the clear. Just update the DTCs and we're all gone. And my green LED for the charging flap has turned back on. So that's um, a very long-winded, exceedingly boring, and I hope you didn't like, um, look at the oldest coding uh, for our charger. So folks, there it is. A exceedingly boring time-consuming and uninteresting walkthrough of our current state of play with the old Fauve Ladergrade. Now, next part of the plan is, um, now that we have the 11 kilowatt three phase, three phase, um, e-tron charger working, going to see uh, about having another attack at the say at me two phase uh, version. Now that we've our coding and diagnostic stuff here, um, it'll hopefully make finding out about that and possibly about those uh, Volkswagen Leda manager or charging controller boxes um, possibly accessible to us as well uh, for both for hopefully for CCS and also uh, to kind of figure out what they send out to the, the likes of the Say At Me charger. Because the Say At Me charger um, only has 
the charger control or lay the great components in it. Um, whereas the Volkswagen P have 3.3 kilowatt and the 11 kilowatt e-tron, e uh, they have both the lay the great and the lay the manager built into them. Um, whereas they're separate for the 7.2 kilowatt two phase uh, charger. Uh, so that could be quite useful to us because theoretically, then uh, the 7.2 kilowatt two phase charger is a simple CAN message. There's no coding, there's no other uh, nonsense that we have to do with that. We can just figure out what the lay the manager sends to delay the great and just um, simulate that in a, in a similar way uh, to what we've done with the BMW S-Box and to what Jamie has done with the Volkswagen E-Box uh, contactor boxes. So I'm going to work away on this for a bit, folks. Um, hopefully we learn some more about these char chargers. Uh, and make them more available to you. So that is the cunning plan. And then once I have worked out all that, I then open source it, profit, move to Lanzarote, job done. Now, so until then, and until my first broadcast from Lanzarote, um, don't forget to check out the links in the description. Uh, particularly avoid the ones to Patreon and PayPal because don't want to support me doing this because then you get more of these crappy videos. Do check out though the link to the open inverter forum thread on the charger and so forth and Mitch's uh, channel and videos as well. And until next time, said happy charger hacking before haven't i have mm, i'm gonna say ah happy later manager hacking